continuing my series on Python for Physics Educators and also students. Uh, I am working on uh, the things you can do in a class for the second semester of physics. Uh, in this case, we're looking at the electric field. And today, I want to look at the electric field due to a dipole. Now, I, I did say in my last video that I was going to make a visual display of the electric field due to a dipole, and I'm not. Instead, I'm going to do, this is an activity I actually do in class. And so in class, I have the students, or I show the students how to derive uh, the electric field due, the approximate electric field due to a dipole. So I have a negative charge and a positive charge separated by distance s. If I'm a distance r away uh, along the axis of a dipole, then this is the magnitude of the electric field. 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught 2 q s over r cubed. And then if you're perpendicular to the axis of the dipole, it looks like this. But these are approximations. So what I want to do is to, is to uh, make a graph. And I'm just going to do this along the axis. And you can do this one later. I'm going to plot this as a function of distance from the center. Uh, and then I'm going to do it two ways. I'm going to do it using this equation and then the exact equation. So the exact electric field, all I do is take the electric field to the positive charge plus the electric field to the negative charge and add them together. Okay. And so I already have a function for the electric field due to a, uh, a point charge. Uh, and I'm going to use that function that I made in the last video uh, to calculate the exact value. And then I'm going to make a graph to compare it to this. Okay, so let's get started. I'm not going to make any uh, visual displays. It's just going to be a graph that I'm going to make. Uh, let's jump right to it, because this is a pretty good uh, activity, I think. Okay, so here I already have my function that I had from before for uh, calculating the electric field due to a point charge. Let's go ahead and make my dipole. So I'm going to say QN, no Q, is just going to be equal to, let's say it's 3 nanocoulombs. 3e negative 9, uh, and then I'm going to need s. S is going to be equal to I'm just I'm I'm just picking. Let's put a millimeter. So s equals 0 0.001 meters. Okay. So now I want to make another function that calculates the magnitude of the electric field. I'm trying to think if I should make that as another function or just do it straight out. Hmm. I could use a function. Let's just do it. Let's just let's not worry about that. Okay. So let's make a graph. Uh, so I'm going to make a graph. G1 equals uh, graph. Uh, X title equals R in me in meters. And then Y title is going to be equal to E, the total electric field in newtons per coulomb. Uh, just so you know, I, I always do this uh, square bracket uh, for my units. You can do whatever you want. It's just a text field. Okay. I also am going to put this uh, width equals 500, height equals 200. Okay. Now I need two. I'm going to make two graphs, uh, and my two graphs are going to be uh, F1. It's called F E for exact. Uh, the exact value of electric field, uh, G curve, uh, color equals color dot blue. And let's give it a label. Label equals E. Let's just put it exact. F A for approximation is also going to be G curve. Uh, let me make this a little bigger. Color equals color dot red. Label equals far field. And that's the far field approximation. Okay, so now I'm going to start at some location and calculate the electric field and start moving further and further away. So let's start with, I'm going to put uh, R. I'm going to move along the x axis. Um, and I'm trying to decide if I want to call R vector. Yes, I think I am. So where should we start this? Let's start this at uh, a distance of 2s. So r is going to be equal to the vector 2 times s, 0, 0. So that's pretty close. That's not a far field approximation. Now the next thing I need is how much of a jump am I going to do? How, how far am I going to move to my next data point? So let's say dr is going to be equal to uh, vector uh, s over 10 
zero, zero. That might be a little bit small, but who cares? This is Python, right? It'll do whatever I ask it to do. What's it gonna do? Say no? It can't say no. Okay, so now I'll say, I'm gonna make a loop. I'm gonna say while r dot x, really should be the magnitude, is less than, how far away do I wanna go? Let's go to 10 times the value of s. So while it's less than 10 times s, do the following. Number one, I want to calculate the exact value of the electric field. So here I have two q's separated by s. Um, let's, let's make this. R q n is gonna be equal to, I'm gonna center it on the origin, so it's gonna be vector uh, negative s over two, zero, zero. R q p is gonna be vector s over two, zero, zero. Uh, and then my observation location is going to be R. Actually, I, sh I guess I should call that RO. Let's call that RO. Call that RO. Um, okay. Yes, because I need those vectors from the charge to the observation location. And it's not the same thing as RO. So let's find that. Let's say uh, RN is the vector from RO, so this is gonna be RO minus RQN. So it's gonna be the vector from RQ, the negative one, to the observation location. And then uh, RP is gonna be equal to RO minus RPN, RQP. Uh, and those are my two vectors. I know the charges are positive and negative. Now I can, I can write my total exact electric field, I'll call it EE, as just uh, using my function, right? So I have my function E, so it's gonna be E of uh, R Q R N R O negative Q. So there's a negative charge, the charge location is at R N, the observation location is R O, and that's gonna that will return the vector value of the electric field due to the negative charge. Now I just need to add onto that E R P R O Q. So I, I did it all in one step, right? Well, three lines. So that function finds the value of the electric field, and this doesn't even matter if it's on the x-axis. I could be anywhere, which is kind of cool. And now I have my exact electric field due to that point charge. Now let's calculate the approximate EA. I'm just gonna type my equation. It's gonna be equal to, I need K up here. K equals nine E nine. I have it in that function, so it has to be defined outside too. Uh, it's going to be equal to K times two times Q times S divided by R cubed. But now R, I, I wanna make R as the magnitude of RO. RO is the location of R since it's from the origin. Um, so this is going to be equal to mag RO cubed. Now I'm going to plot both of those. Uh, Fe dot plot uh, mag RO. That, I'm gonna just plot the mag. I guess I could do RO dot X. Let's do that. RO dot X and then uh, EE and then fa dot plot ro dot x e a. Now I need to, this is the part where I always mess up, I need to add on, I need to move my r value. So ro equals ro plus dr. And so that's gonna move to the next part. And that's it, let's see what happens. Nothing. Aha, cannot plot, aha. So I, I, did, I was plotting the electric field, which I can't. So let's plot the magnitude of the electric field. Mag, mag, oh, that one, that one is a scalar. Yeah. Okay, so something weird happened. That's not what I expected. The exact and the far field are not the same. Maybe I'm not far enough away. Okay, let's do this. Let's say uh, my dr is gonna just be s, and let's go to 50 and 30. Something weird is happening. Hmm. The exact is not changing. 
the exact I did change RO hmm 2QSRO let's do this let's plot ROX versus ROX that should be a straight line but I something weirds happening okay that's good so I'm going from so I am increasing that why is my value not changing is it because I did X the mag of E K to Q S let's just plot that E A 2 Q S over the magnitude of R O okay that looks right that looks good okay so I'm just have a problem with my other one I, I can make this um, dr a little bit smaller oh no it did s divided by 10 okay so it's a nice smooth curve that one looks fine one of our cube okay now let's turn that one off and plot this one r n R O. Hmm. Oh. No. Okay, let's just plot it. Hmm. That's just wild. E temp K Q norm R. Norm R. Did I calculate R? Oh. I don't need this. I did it twice. This function uh, has that built in. So I just say R Q N R Q P. Yeah. So I, I subtracted that same thing twice. I was I don't know what I was thinking. That's but there. Okay. So now now it's working. I roll. Okay, so you see here they're they're right on top of each other. The two things agree. Now let's run this uh, much closer. So I'm going to start at uh, S, and I'm going to go to um, let's say 3S, and there you can see that they do diverge. So this blue function is which one's which? That's the exact electric field, and the, the proximal electric field is not the same. But as you get further away over around here, they're pretty much the same solutions. So they two diverge. In the derivation of the electric field due to a dipole, uh, we make this approximation that R is much greater than the separation distance, and that's how you get that approximate value. And there you go. So this is something that I think is really great for the students to do because they can do it both ways. They can do the approximate solution and the, uh, the field due to uh, the exact field due to the dipole and make that graph. Okay, so now in the next video, I'm going to save this code. Let's do this. Uh, exact versus approx dipole. I'm going to give you that code. Uh, I'm going to give you a list to the playlist down below. And if I remember, I also have the derivation of the approximate electric field due to a dipole. I'll include that down below. But there's a very good chance I'll forget. And if I do and you want that, just, just add a comment and I'll fix it. Okay, because I'm here for you. I'm here to do whatever you want. Um, okay, so now the next video I'm going to make is that uh, I'm going to take the dipole and I want to plot the display the electric field vectors around that dipole so we can see the pattern of field and space and that'll be pretty useful and I'll see you there.